I've heard the argument that African Americans should consider themselves fortunate that they're not in Africa, but instead are living in the greatest country on earth. What are your thoughts on that? There's something about when people, especially black people, tell me that I should be grateful for being an American or living in America that just rubs me the wrong way because a lot of times those people have established themselves to be set up in life in ways that others could only dream. And so when you look at them and look at what they're doing, it's usually because they're either experiencing or they're very close to experiencing what others would call the American dream. And that's when the term familiarity breeds contempt comes to play. And for those of you who don't know what that means, it's basically somebody who has overcome adversity um, and they're desensitized to others who might be going through the same or similar adversity. And their thought process is, well, if I overcame it, you know, why can't they? And the what they fail to realize within that is that people from different regions have varying of uh, different uh, problems, um, different unfortunate circumstances that they can't help. And uh, unfortunately, they're just not afforded the same opportunities. So is there a blind spot between individuals who are better off than those still trying to establish themselves or is it willful ignorance? Um, I think it's a little bit of both. I think that, put it this way, if you're working for a Fortune 500 company and one day you decide to ask your boss for a raise, you've been working at this company for 20 years, you've been a very diligent worker, you've never been late to work, you've always been on top of your tasks, um, you've just been doing really well at this job, no complaints at all for you, you asking your boss for a raise, anybody would look at that and be like, oh, like, yeah, that's reasonable, you know, like, give them a raise. But when you ask your boss, they look at you with contempt and they tell you that you should be proud to be working at a Fortune 500 company. And they even go as far as to bring up your last company that was practicing unsafe practices, that was um, not professional, that was lowballing you. And they tell you, you know, like, you should just be grateful that you're not there anymore and that you should just be proud of where you're at. Like, what would you say in that situation? Like, would you, would you apologize and just be grateful that you're working at a Fortune 500 company? Well, if you can't start a major company or find a better one, then your only option is to gather enough support for your cause, right? Right, correct. And so go ahead and switch out the Fortune 500 company and then also switch out 20 years for a few hundred years and replace asking for a raise with black people asking for equality. What would you say then? Would you continue to face discrimination in the workplace and police agencies targeting you and overall just feeling like a second class citizen or uh, like feeling all those things, would you just, would you like uh, bring your children into that and allow them to inherit all those things that you were going through? Or would you try to fight against it? Because the truth is, is that when people say the word race, that's exactly what this is. This is a race. And I don't mean a, a 40 meter dash. I'm talking about a generational marathon. Like our children, they're going to have to work to continue to pick up where we have progressed to and continue to move forward and progress and make ensure that we're not backtracking. I was so sure you were gonna say a relay race there for a second. <laughs> I was thinking about it, I was thinking about it. Oh, I know what you mean. No, but, but really, what, why does something like this not burn out? Like, are more people needed, uh, more resources, more money, or all of the above? Tyler? I hear some people talking about reparations and how they're needed to the point where they get a little fixated on it. Like this is supposed to make things better, but honestly, I think the truth is that this should be treating the symptom and not curing the disease. Like, okay, if you don't believe me, ask yourself this. 
when you've gotten a tax refund or a stimulus check or anything like that, how'd you spend it? What'd you do with the money? And now ask yourself, if you got a check for 10 times that amount, would you do anything different with the money? I mean, would you go back to school, pay off your bills, pay off your debt, start your own business? Or would you waste it? Because that's the main pitfall of getting reparations that I'm sure plenty of people don't consider. The fact that all the money we get can easily be taken back one way or another. So are you saying that monetary compensation would do more harm than good at this point? What I'm saying is that all that would need to happen is for a few people to raise prices here and raise taxes there, and the government can just wash their hands of this whole thing. They can kick back and say, well, they got their reparations, guess we can cross that off our to-do list, and in the meantime, go on treating black people like second-class citizens. Like, if it's pouring rain one night, and I'm on the side of the road with a flat tire, don't pull up and give me money for a tire. I need a tire. Because now you're driving, and I'm still here with no tire. I gotta walk. Like, I'm trying to do what you're doing. I'm trying to drive. I'm trying to do what you've been doing for a while. So that money might come in handy later on down the road. But it'd be a whole lot nicer if I could drive instead of walk. And uh, I know we brought this up a bit earlier, but um, what case could be made here and now for African Americans to be seen as valuable assets to this country? Would it be the numerous contributions to science, to art, uh, literature, or is there something else that should be considered? Um, I think, I think that's a really good question. Um, I just want to say that it really upsets me when I, when I hear people, especially black people, using the word ghetto in a negative light because for the longest they were trained to view themselves in a negative light and also take pride in the fact that they were not conforming to their white counterparts ideas of normalcy or what was considered white basically making the antithesis of who they are and what they represent and it really breaks my heart when I see black children being ridiculed or criticized for having creativity and ingenuity. And they don't know, like people don't know that that is a literal survival tactic. And that when, when they do things like that, it can be so harmful. And, and I, don't, I don't understand why people don't see that these, that that they are such assets that they can be such assets to companies, to the workplace by their simple creative ideas. And um, a lot of people like, yes, some there are some black people who do take sometimes their creativity too far. Maybe there's some who um, are, are cheap in their creativity. Um, but as long as it's not hurting anybody, you know, I don't, I don't see what's there's in the wrong in it. But if they were given the right set of resources and if people allowed them and believed them and didn't discriminate against them I believe that they would inevitably make a company so much money and do so much good for this world but you know that would take people to be able to look beyond the surface level things and actually accept a person for their set of talents. No absolutely. Um... I know we don't have much time left, but I did want to, you know, pose this one final question, and that's how do we bring both sides to the table? Personally, I'd say patience should be the weapon of choice, honestly. With demographics in this country shifting in favor of people of color, it's only a matter of time. I truly think that. To be honest, though... I don't quite know how to get white people to sit in the short run. But I do know black people should be waiting at the table already when it is time for a discussion. Now, I mean, is it wrong to ask a group that's already suffered for hundreds of years to be the first to have a seat? Absolutely. Yes. Without a doubt. But the only reason such a request would even be considered is because the group in question that's suffered so much already is the one that'll suffer most if nothing changes. 
Ignoring the problem or trying to remove yourself from the situation won't solve matters in the long run. It'll just make things harder on those that come after you when they're faced with the same issues. Well, look, Patricia, Tyler, I really appreciate you guys coming on the show, sharing your perspectives. I feel like this was a really eye-opening conversation, and I hope that it will inspire others to have these kinds of open dialogues about uh, issues like this in our society. So I appreciate having you guys on. Yeah, I definitely agree. Thank you so much for having me. I agree. It was a great experience. Hope I can do it again. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Um, if you guys are fans of the show, make sure to tell your family and friends. And until next time.